الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So the good news is that I will not be replacing the khutbah reminder of Abid uh, today. Uh, the bad news is that he was going to speak about the third verse of Surah An-Nisa about the men marrying two or three or four wives. And the better news is that he's going to do that tomorrow, inshallah. So all the men can tune in tomorrow. Um, I've been asked to give a, uh, actually cross your legs guys, get comfortable, okay, we're going to be here until probably Fajr, right, because I've been told to give a lesson, a reminder and a lesson, because this of course is our first Ramadan in this five million pound children adventure uh, um, uh, uh, masjid. And obviously with such a gathering, um, it is important that we remind, our, uh, we remind ourselves of the adab, the etiquettes, the rules of being in a place like this. It doesn't matter, matter whether it's five million pounds or whether we're praying outside in a maidan, there are a certain level, um, uh, there is a certain level of etiquette and obligations that are required when you're standing in salah. Salah is obviously a fantastic key act of worship but what many people don't kind of realize or connect with is that you're actually imitating or emulating probably a better word the angels and the angels when they worship Allah obviously their levels are levels right they can't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they've been created entirely for the worship of Allah so everything that they do is perfect however human beings are better than them because they have the choice and that deficiency that intrinsic kind of weakness of either making mistakes or choosing not to and that of course means that they're with their free, free will when they choose to worship Allah they become better but we still copy the angels in their actions and the angels are always standing in lines and rows that are tight and straight and compact in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the angels when he says, وَالصَّافَاتِ صَفَّى The angels, they are ranked in rows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّا لَنَحْنُ الصَّافُونَ that we are those that stand in front of Allah in tight, straight rows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He loves الصَّفَّى Those who fight and they face the army, they face them in tight rows. How? كَأَنَّهُمْ بُنْيَانُ مرسوس, Like as if they were a tight, perfect wall. You know, we sometimes see a brick wall that's all dodgy and you look at it and you think, uh -huh. But then you know when you see a nice one where everything is perfect and in place and you admire the work of the bricklayer, that is the bunyan marsus. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa before he would start the salah, he himself personally would leave his place from the front. A lot of folks commented the other day that Shaykh Abdul Ghafar, he just went on a walkabout, right? People were looking here, they were thinking, what's the delay? My daughter in the back was saying, what was happening? They were watching in the camera on the TV, where's the Shaykh gone? And he's gone and disappeared, he's walking up and down. He's doing exactly what the Prophet Wasallam used to do every single salah. He would go and walk up and down, and he would push people forward, push people back. It's so... Is so straighten your rows. Straighten your rows. Wasuddul Faraj. Close the gaps. Wahadu bain al malakib. And straighten your shoulders. Bring the shoulders together. And he would warn those that were taking it easy. Like, this is, this is straight enough. I'm, I'm okay. I'm all right like that. He would say, you will straight, wallahi, he said. Wallahi, I swear by Allah. You will straighten the rows or Allah will, will cause division between your hearts. He will divide your hearts. Now, I think all of us know that when you're standing with a person and they're just not listening when you say, brother, can you just come a little bit closer? Or brother, can you close the gap? And they say, I'm okay where I am. You know, the ego kicks in and I'm standing straight. And then what you feel at that moment is that hatred that a person that you were trying to give some advice for the sake of Allah and that person turned around and said that. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to have deputies. He would send out Umar and Bilal and they would go off to the back rows. I want you to imagine this. So he'd be like dealing with the first row. He sends Umar and then Bilal to the back rows. They're going up and down, pushing, pushing. Anas used to say that Bilal used to go and kick the people's feet like this. Push back, you push back, you push forward. Each one like this. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was at Badr, right? 
he, Badr is a war, he had the uh, uh, arrow. The, he took the arrow and he would go around and actually Anas used to say that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to straighten us like we used to straighten our arrows. You know how you make the arrow shaft, you keep shaving it, then you look down it, right? You look to make sure that it's straight and then you can see that it's not. So then you carry on shaving it, shaving it until it becomes straight because the straighter it is, the truer it flies. So he said that he would straighten our rows like we would straighten our arrows. So he keep going back, he keep looking again and say, no, you like this, you like that. Imagine our attitude to what happens now when we're told to straighten our rows and close the gaps and how our attitude towards that is and how that used to be. And you probably have heard of a story of the hadith of Siwad, the hadith of the man who kissed the Prophet Sallallahu But do you know how that happened? Ad Badr, Siwad radiallahu anhu was a sahabi who was out of line, in the line, when they're getting ready for salah. He's gone up and down to Allah Sallam and he has his arrow and he's tapping people and he comes to one and he goes to Siwad who's out of line and he taps him in the uh, chest. Get back. And he goes, oh, you hurt me Ya Rasulullah. And you are the one who was sent with the haqq and justice. I need to take my right. And the Prophet Sallallahu he opened up his sh uh, shirt and he said, take back your right. Yeah, and he poked me back because that's what was, was meant to happen. If a mistake happens, you push someone, they should push you back. End of the story, no drama, no beef. So, opens up his shirt and uh, where Siwad, he leans over and he kisses the chest of the Prophet And of course, the Prophet said, what was that? Yeah, and he, you know, uh, I pushed you, you should push me back, don't you? And he play around. He and, and Siwad goes, it is what it is. That's literally what he said to the Prophet He goes, you told me what to do, you told me, you gave me the opportunity, I did what I wanted to do, the game is over, it is what it is. So the Prophet looked at him, he made dua for him, and people think happily ever after, yeah? He closed his button, he said, get back into line. Get back into line. Made him straight back into line because that was the more important thing. Nobody remembers this part of the story. Everyone remembers the romantic part of the kissing of the Prophet ﷺ. So number one, I think you've learned, it is essential that every brother and especially sisters who are very bad when it comes to fulfilling this rule of completing the first rows, closing the gaps and keeping the line straight. The second point is that in this masjid we have some challenges. When we have challenges, we need to work together. You know that it's not the obligation just of the Imam because of what I told you. Every person has an obligation to themselves straighten and ensure the people around them are straightening, closing gaps, moving forward. If you see half a gap, then the rest of you should think, this half a gap, if we move a little bit aside, we'll make it one gap, another person can come in. This is a very poor depth masjid, but very wide. The Imam's eyes can't reach at the end. Naturally, when people walk into the middle of these doors, they can't see to the very end so they immediately start making another row it is the obligation and the responsibility of people to go to the ends and ensure that the lines are completely full said, only complete the first row and then until it's complete then the next one and not the way that we treat it in a you know yes yeah, someone else will come someone else will fill it etc so that's a challenge that you need to overcome another challenge which is happening in all Masajid, not just this one, frankly maybe this one com controls it a little bit better, is the appearance of chairs. Now I just want you to remind, I want to remind you something. The chair is not some uh, 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 invention that was, you know, that came 20 years ago. At the time of the Prophet Sallallahu there were also people who had bad knees and bad backs and all kinds of problems and they had chairs, surprise, surprise, plenty of chairs. And there was not a single chair in the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. Neither in the masjid of the Sahaba, neither in the masjid of the Tabi'een, and neither in the masjid of the early generations of the Muslims. Because in our fiqh, and in the, imam of the, in, in the schools of the four Imams, in the madhahib of Islam, the principle about a person who cannot stand is that they sit on the floor. It's in modern times that chairs have become in vogue. Now I'm not here to tell you that chairs are haram, but it's not the default position. 
the chair is to be reduced only to those people who have the inability to get up off the floor. If a person has a temporary problem especially, or a person has a, 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 a something which doesn't prevent them from getting off the floor, prevents them from going to sajda for example, but they've still got the power in their arms and the youth for example, to lift themselves up, this person will never ever be out of line, will they? They will always be standing in the middle of the line, in the, in the right place in the line, the salah will start, they'll be there, but then when it comes for the sajda, he will sit down, and how will he sit down? He will normally sit down with his legs out towards the qibla. This is the sunnah. This happened at, by the, the companions, they would sit straight up, back up, legs straight out towards the qibla. They do the, the, the sujood, back again, do the sujood, then they get back up again, for those folks who are able to. For those who are unable to, and definitely need to use a chair, the ruling of the chair is not how you want to put the chair, the ruling of the chair is how the masjid decides, because there never was a chair used by the Prophet so I can't give you a hadith and say haram for you to put the chair like that, because there isn't a hadith for me to say haram. We go and look what the scholars said about the chairs. First of all, minimize them, this is not a church, it's starting to resemble that where you start to get pews of the believers. We are not people who sit in pews, we stand in sufuf. So we minimize the chairs, we keep them to the side as you see here, and if you are going to sit on the chair, you must recognize the etiquette that you must not cause harm for the people behind you. Therefore the chair, its edge is the edge of the heels of the people. A line is straightened by the heels, not by the toes. Therefore the back of the chair is in line with the heel. That means exactly as you see sitting here on the left hand side is the correct way that a chair is meant to be placed. There are people, like what happened to me the other morning in Salatul Fajr, clearly nothing to do with this reminder, and he had his chair right back behind. I said, brother, this is a policy of this masjid, please if you don't mind coming into the front. He goes, I do what I want. I said, you know what, you do what you want, bro. Yeah, you do what you want. I'm not going to fight you in Ramadan in Fajr because you're a plum. You just go and sit, stand how you are. The guy behind obviously had to make sajda like this, yeah? Because the whole chair is in his prayer zone. Haram. Haram khalis, yani to make idha to the believers is unacceptable. So I want my brothers and sisters to understand this, that in this masjid where it's clearly an increasing issue where there are growing numbers of the elderly and the chairs are being used, firstly try to avoid using a chair if you can. If you need to use the chair, make sure that you pray most of your prayers standing. It will be slightly tight. I get the front row. It is a weird sensation. You're standing this close to the screen. I get that. I understand that. It might be, uh, uh, it's easier in the busier prayers that you maybe start the chairs uh, on the second row, for example, so that uncomfortable feeling isn't there. But whatever difficulty you're going through, you can't affect the people who are behind you. So that's a reminder for the chair use. For the ladies, they have a major issue with their bags. They bring the kitchen sink with them for the salah. What you should be realizing is you come to salah nice and simple and easy. When you're bringing all these bags, you're putting them in front of you and creating your own sajda to be this kind of humpback situation. You are meant to be creating a space for you which is empty for you to make sajda properly. You are not allowed to put your bag next to you and then therefore avoid another person being close to you. Therefore gaps all the way through. What is a gap in the prayer by the way? A gap is not the gap between your foot and the next person's foot. A gap is a shoulder and shoulder gap. You are not obligated to have to go like this to each other's feet and to make sure that all of the feet are connected in a chain. You are obligated to ensure that your feet are towards the Qibla and that there's not more than a massive gap in between, maybe this much no problem, but that the shoulders are touching. When you have women that are putting their handbags by the side, um, handbags this side, or handbags in front of them, this is a problem. If you're going to bring them, bring them small. If you're going to bring them, put it over where your stomach would be so you make sajda over them and that you go into a proper sajda with your back straight and that you don't end up making a sajda which is like this, just because you have to keep your bag at the front. My brothers and sisters, this is the basic etiquette of standing in the soft. The golden rule is to respect Allah with his rules and don't harm the other believers. Whether standing out of line, not closing the gaps, not brushing your teeth, people are you know, burping left, right and center. 
Yani bringing up, yani, oh, at the time right now, we've only got an hour after you've eaten. Just eat a little bit, bro. You can go home and stuff yourself afterwards uh, later at night. But people eating all of their curries, this, that, whatever, it's horrible. Well, it's horrible. We're trying to listen to Quran and think, and all we smell is the blah, de, blah, 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 blah. It's horrible. Use some perfume, use, do some sunnah, spread some joy amongst the other people. They come, they smell you, say, mashallah, I'd like to stand next to you again. Not yani, you know why? I wish I never see you again. Right? So, basic adab, basic etiquette. Any questions on any of this? Yeah, we can go back to uh, Abid's uh, reminders. Khalas, Zakumullah khair.